So we'll let In Kel which case, um, Kel will go to Iska. And uh, ask Iska, would you mind taking a walk with me? I'd love to, Kel. So we're I'm just going to walk away from the camp. Well, not too far, but you know, looking for a spot that's you know far enough out of earshot, but not too far away. Yeah, the um, I mean, this basin sort of open area is probably about a hundred feet or so across. Um, so I mean, you could all but go back to where you first entered into the canyon. I'll, certainly, the little stream running through gives some white noise that would cover conversation much further away than. 30 or 40 feet and some place to to sit easily driftwood or something else in i mean place. kel doesn't care but someplace comfortable for isco to sit. Yeah. <laughs> i And he pauses for a longer moment than seems comfortable. I need to say this to somebody. And I feel you're the best person I can say this to. What's going on, Cal? I think I know the reason for my brother's anger towards me. At least part of it. What happens? What What do you think's going on? Back in the vice, I had a I had a vision of the last thing my brother was thinking of. That fueled his becoming this revenant. The, the doll that Luna has. That she told me Dustin gave her that belonged to his daughter. Lily. Lily. I saw from his perspective something that happened that I was responsible for. When I was back in my forest, It's been about two years at least, I think. I found out that there was a group of human settlers that were starting to come into our forest to chop down trees. 
to kill what they saw as dangerous predators. But what I knew to be friends I went to confront them and tell them that they did not belong there and they had no right to be doing what they were doing. They refused to leave and wouldn't listen to me. There was one bear in particular that lived in the area that I had known. They had killed her for protecting her children. And so I said, if you will not go peaceably, then I will make you go. And I did. This apparently was the settlement where Dustin and his family had moved to. I hadn't seen my brother in five years more. We had traveled together always, but eventually we had an, one too many arguments. He kept trying to treat me like he was my father and not my brother. But apparently in that time, he must have met these settlers and become their friends. I don't regret, regret what I did and I would do it again. And the brother that I knew before we parted would have joined me in protecting our home. But because of what I did, from what Luna tells me, his daughter was blamed. As it seems, Genasi tend to be perpetually blamed indiscriminately for things they never did. And that is what fueled my brother's anger. And because of he holds up his finger, these cursed rings turned his anger towards me. She um she looks at Cal and I think hones in on his um tattoos and uh I don't think she means to say it out loud, but 
she ends up saying, like, you know, connecting the dots in her head to the story she heard from Dustin, and just kind of whispers, like, in peace with the devil's markings. And it's all coming together of everything. The devil's markings? The villager's story told of a demon coming from the woods covered in what they call what they thought were devil's markings it's it was just you it was just you and your tattoos Kel and it's why my bearer that part of my soul has been ripped out of me by my brother. There is a moment of pause as Iska tries to figure out what even to do or say at this moment. There's a lot of feelings going through her head. But she breathes in and uh, looks to Kel. I'm, I'm sure you know this, but just so you hear it from me, you're not responsible for the superstitions in this world, for the fear of men in this world. Their cowardice, their irrationality, and their cruelty. You didn't know. And you're here now. Why do they have to be so destructive? They're afraid, Kel. So hateful. You wonder why I don't like to go into cities. You wonder why I don't like to be around people. People like that they have no regard for anything but themselves. They don't understand, Cal. They don't want to understand. So we make them. I tried to ex I tried to explain and they didn't want to understand. And they refused to understand. So I did what I had to do. And unfortunately, Kel, there will always be people who don't understand, always be people who don't want to learn. And the best I've got is we change as much as we can, as many people as we can. Where we are now, what we're doing now, that's for the good of the world. That's why we do this now. Anything that happened before, even, even Lily, that's done. But it's not done. And he holds up the pouch because it lives on in my brother's anger right here. How do I fix that? How do I fix him? Luck. fixed his curse. Celia fixed hers. Cal, I don't know any I don't know the answer. We are going to find it with you. Whatever lies ahead, whatever is in Falcon's Crest, whatever the answer to your curse is, it's out there. And we are going to find it. Whatever's happening to you now, as angry as your brother is, this is not the life you deserve. This is not a punishment you deserve. And it's one that we are going to fix. It's not the life my brother deserves either. 
you're right. Anger and fear, once again. We will find what we need to cure you, to cure him. Anger and fear are strong, but they're not eternal. At least they don't have to be. She um, doesn't touch Cal, but just extends a hand in like the middle ground between the two of them. They don't have to be. Cal reaches out and takes her hand. And she squeezes it tight. Kel squeezes tighter and says, There's a spirit in you that reminds me so much of somebody that I haven't seen in a very long time and miss very dearly. Thank you. Thank you. She brings him in for a hug. He loves her. It's so hard not to be alone sometimes, but We forget we need people. We forget we need each other. And she squeezes them as tightly as she can. And Kel holds on to her as long as she lets him. <laughs> 